a lot of people in space die. Yeah, in movies. Considering the danger of the job, it's hard to believe that of the 536 people that have gone to space, only 18 people have died during space flight. And yes, technically only three people have ever died above the Kármán line, the unofficial official start of space somewhere between 80 and 100 kilometers, depending on who you ask. Those three were part of the Soviet Suez 11 mission. But considering that all the others that died were returning from space or had just crossed the Kármán line or in the case of the Challenger were actually still alive when their shuttle broke up, yeah, they get to be on this list. But in all of those cases, we saw total and cataclysmic mission failures, AKA everyone died. But what happens if it's just one person? Or since that has yet to be the case, what would happen? I'm Mr. Betts and this video is part of a massive collaboration of YouTubers to celebrate exploration in space and the 50th anniversary of the first lunar landing. I'll leave a link to the playlist at the end and make sure you check it out. It might surprise you, but there's no actual NASA protocol for dealing with a corpse in space. I've gone through the flight director's handbook and while there's a long list of people that must be notified as well as guidelines dealing with telling the next of kin and the public, there's nothing that says what to do with the body. Addressing this, or more appropriately skirting the issue, NASA said in an official statement, NASA does not prepare contingency plans for all remote risks. Yeah, it kind of sounds like how no one's supposed to talk to a pitcher who's pitching a perfect game. It seems as if other agencies like the Japanese JAXA and the European Space Agency at least entertain the idea of such a scenario. Astronaut Chris Hadfield said that on the International Space Station, they would run simulations, talking through what to do. So let's do that. And I'm not even gonna address if you somehow got separated from your spacecraft because A, you're pretty much always tethered to it, and B, you'll have a safer or simplified aid for EVA rescue, which is basically a jetpack to get you back to your craft. Oh, and this thing had to be tested untethered, the earliest version by astronaut Brian McCandless in 1984. Sir, you know what it takes to fly untethered in outer space? takes brass balls. Considering that astronauts are in peak physical condition, at least at the start of their mission, the most likely scenario is that you're on a spacewalk and you're hit by a small meteorite or piece of space debris, which could be a nut or a bolt or a paint chip, which doesn't seem like much until you realize that it's traveling upwards of 17,000 miles per hour. Now you might be thinking, yeah, but isn't space debris in the same orbit as everything else? No. As NASA instructor and flight controller Robert Frost, no, no, that's the poet. There we go. As Frost said, the debris is a swirling cloud of death. It is not neat racetracks of orderly Congress. I think you might be imagining the traffic in space to be like the German Autobahn. It's more like downtown Naples. Okay, so let's say that you're an astronaut and you get hit by a piece of space debris and it doesn't obliterate you and instead punctures a hole in your suit. Well, you're not gonna explode. Yes, if the hole is big enough, your body is going to expand, but your tissue and skin would be enough to keep you together. Your blood isn't going to boil, but it will start to vaporize. But if your eyelids or mouth are open, they're going to boil. None of that is what kills you though. Remembering that space is a vacuum, air would be sucked out of your lungs and intestines and you'd very soon pass out and asphyxiate. All this stuff isn't guaranteed though. Spacesuits are incredibly well made. Depending on where the breach is, an astronaut could survive upwards of 20 minutes with a hole as big as an eighth of an inch. And then there's mission specialist Jay App, who in 1991 didn't even notice that he had punctured his glove until he had got back into the space shuttle Atlantis and saw a red mark. Turns out his skin and coagulated blood sealed the opening and adrenaline left him none the wiser. Are you kidding me? But let's say it's worst case scenario, you've died and you're tethered to your spacecraft. You might think, well, the crew will just cut you loose and float away. The rest of the garbage. <sighs> Didn't we just discuss the dangers of space debris? Never mind that the United Nations has some pretty firm guidelines concerning space debris mitigation. Do you really want this? So we're keeping your body, probably until we can ship it back to Earth. But you're a soon to be decomposing corpse and quite a large biohazard risk. That's why as soon as you're brought into the airlock, that's probably where you're going to stay. You'll be kept in your spacesuit because even though your body will decompose faster in it, it's also airtight, so you won't be stinking up the joint. Plus, the airlocks are generally the coldest part of the ship, which will slow down the decomposition. Another option might be to freeze dry you. 
NASA had hooked up with a Swedish company called Promessa to develop the body back. It would be a specifically designed body bag that you would be placed in and a robotic arm would hold you outside the spacecraft. The bag would be made to let all the water in you evaporate and freeze you to a temperature of about negative 270 Fahrenheit. And then it would start shaking you. Being that you have no water in you and you're so incredibly frozen, you'd be gone, reduced to atoms. Not that small, but broken up into a fine white powder, much easier to store. Mind you that this isn't a thing yet, but Promesa has a similar service here on Earth. I wonder if I can get them to sponsor a video. Now let's talk about the big red elephant in the room, Mars. For as long as I can remember, every president has talked about going to Mars. In the off chance that we ever actually get there, what happens if an astronaut dies there? Equipment is held to a Howard Hughes level of sanitation to prevent contamination of the Martian environment. So just burying Buzz Lightyear and all the 39 trillion bacterial cells in his body may not cut it. But if properly sealed, you could let the body sit out overnight when average temperatures fall below negative 100 degrees Fahrenheit and then bury it. But please mark it clearly. Another option could be cremation, but here's the catch, oxygen and fuel. Sure, you may have some spare fuel, but is this how you want to use it? I mean, fuel on Mars must rank up there with antimatter and printer ink as the most valuable substances known to man. One last option I want to bring up, maybe disgusting. They're eating her. And then they're going to eat me. Oh my God! Composting. Astronauts are very, um, thrifty with their waste. I mean, how do you think they get the water they drink? And by dying, you have just transitioned from brave explorer to very, very potent fertilizer. Your body could be used to help grow sustainable crops and keep your fellow astronauts alive. And I know what you're saying. We can't use people for fertilizer, but let me explain. When we die, our bodies become the grass, and the astronauts eat the grass. And so we are all connected in the great circle of life. So that's what you do with a corpse in space. If you're new here, I'm Mr. Betts and I usually do history videos. So if that's your thing, make sure you hit the subscribe button. Also check out the rest of the space playlist by a ton of other educational YouTubers. Be safe and I'll see you next time.